Hi, this is Martin from Imagineer Systems. Today we're going to be looking at the Lens Module inside Mocha Pro. The Lens Module inside Mocha Pro is designed to locate and calibrate any lens distortion that you have in your footage. This can be anything from subtle lens distortion, such as the footage here, or really extreme distortion, such as fisheye lenses. So let's jump straight in and have a look at the lens parameters. Our Lens tab here is selected, and the first one on the left hand side is our Input tab. Here we have the calibration clip and the input clip. The calibration clip is what we'll actually be calibrating for the lens distortion, and the input clip is what will be affected by that calibration. Quite often it can be useful to set the calibration clip to a grid that you've shot with your lens previously. However, if you don't have this, you can try using the input clip as your calibration clip to see if it can find the straight lines in the scene. To locate any lines, we simply come over to the Calibration Lines section and click the Locate Lines button. Mocha Pro will then try and find any of the straight lines in the scene and highlight them with these green lines. Once these lines have been located, we then have to tell Mocha which lines to use to assist the calibration. To do this, we come back to our Calibration Lines section and choose New Line. We then come back up to the viewer and select one of the lines that we believe to be straight. In this case, we're going to click this one here. Once you've selected one, you either have to press New Line again, or press the N key to select a new line. So over here I'm going to select this one, and then I'm going to press N again, and then select this line. This line here, you can see, is actually broken, so we need to select both by clicking once, and then again. Anytime you see an extreme curve that's broken up into segments, you need to make sure that you select every single segment to tell Mocha that it is actually a straight line, otherwise it won't know how to calibrate it correctly. I'm just going to press N one more time and select this top line here, and then we can come down to our calibration section to begin the calibration. So let's first select a parameter type. Normally you'll use one parameter distortion, as this handles either uniform barrel distortion or pincushion distortion. Two parameter distortion is quite often used when you don't have a uniform lens and there is some form of wave or irregularity in the lens. One parameter inverse is used for real viz files, and the anamorphic model is for any anamorphic lenses or lenses with a different vertical and horizontal distortion. In this case, however, we're going to stick with one parameter, and then we can come down to calibrate. You only need to check equidistant lines if you're actually using some form of calibration grid and you want to tell Mocha that the lines are equally distant apart. Check calibration center if you actually want Mocha to readjust the center of the image after you've done your calibration. You should use this if the lens distortion is off center. I would always recommend using it if there is also significant distortion in the shot. So when we click the calibrate button, Mocha will start to calibrate. Now it's very hard to actually see here with the lines, so I'm going to turn on the grid. So you can see here by the warp of the grid that the lens has been calculated according to the lines we've selected. So once we've calculated this distortion, we can now choose two options. We can either undistort the footage and render it out to file, or we can choose to leave the distortion as it is and then use that data to track and insert objects into our scene. So let's look first at rendering the undistorted footage. This is a very simple process of making sure our distortion is enabled, and then coming over to our render button. I'm just going to turn my grid off so you can see this. And let's just render this forwards. So this is being rendered out to flattened form. And then if we come back to the start here, it's a very subtle effect here, but you can see it's actually rendered out an undistorted clip. And if I switch back, you can see that that distortion is being popped. The downside to rendering, of course, is the risk of loss of quality. So Mocha offers the other option of actually inserting distorted clips into the footage. This process is actually no different from the drawing and insertion in the standard Mocha workflow. So if I come up to my spline and draw a shape, it automatically creates a surface based on that shape. Now if I draw this shape into the corners here, it will actually take on the properties of the undistorted lens. So you can see here how the grid is still warping according to that lens distortion, 
but it's happening on the fly as I adjust my surface. This means we can also track this, so I'm just going to drag out my spline shape a little bit here and actually do a perspective track with this lens distortion. So let's just track forwards and you can see how the grid is still warping as it's following the lens distortion and we're tracking through the phone as we go. Rather than make you sit through that, I've actually skipped to the end of the tracking so we can see the final result here. So we've tracked through the entire shot and you can still see the warp following along as we go. So let's just quickly insert a clip. I'm going to use, to use the default grid 32 by 32. And then this inserted clip will warp along with the distortion data that we've calculated from the lens tab. Once you have your distorted inserted clip, you can then come across to the insert tab and then do your renders. The main reason it's useful to do it this way rather than undistorting your footage is that you won't lose as much quality by actually rendering a distorted insert into your already distorted footage. Of course, if your plan is to actually get rid of the lens distortion, you'll have to use the undistortion rendering method inside the actual lens module. Now that we've covered the basics of lens calibration in the lens module, we're going to have a look now at a two-parameter distortion using a much more complex lens.